Right. So, um, so the work that I did was highly influenced by the mathematician William Thurston, who was my mentor as a postdoc, and um, he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, so he, in the late seventies, early eighties, I guess he um, he had made some big breakthroughs in three dimensional topology. Like if there was a breakthrough prize last, back then, I'm sure he would have got one. He had a a, a well known sort of expository paper on this and he had a list of 23 problems at the end of that paper and um, I guess in over the course of my career I've solved several of those problems and I guess um, well not some of those problems are not really solved because they're sort of open-ended but of the ones that were sort of more well-defined most of those have been solved by now and I solve um, some of the last few that were that were sort of precisely formulated Two-dimensional spaces like the surface of the Earth, you can't have a global coordinate system. Turns out, so if you have like longitude and latitude coordinates, there's a um, there's sort of not well defined. There's not a well defined longitude or lat um, at the at the north or south poles. Um, and so it turns out on a sphere, you can't. No matter how you move it, you can't have a global sort of coordinate system. So. It turns out in three-dimensional spaces, you can. Like on the three-dimensional sphere, it turns out you can have a, a sort of global coordinate system um, where um, at any point there's um, sort of a an up, a, a left, right, and a forward and back, up and down. So um, what I found was that uh, up to some finite ambiguity and certain restrictions on th various three-dimensional spaces, um, you could find a kind of global coordinate system um, of a more general type, but that's um, that's that's one thing that I did, and that was one of the questions from his list. And it turned out a lot of these questions were interrelated. That was sort of the keystone one that implied several other ones.